It is clear that the objects indispensable to the civilian population, such as agricultural areas, are normally civilian objects and so are protected against attacks. As we have seen, this protection is not absolute. States retain some discretion in attacking civilian objects. However, the protection afforded to objects indispensable to the civilian population further limits this discretion. Firstly, objects that are indispensable to the survival of the civilian population can only become lawful military objectives in two specific situations. The first situation is when they are solely used as sustenance for the enemy armed forces. Obviously, this is very restrictive condition. Agricultural areas or drinking water installations are hardly likely to be used only for the benefit of armed forces. The second situation is when the object, also being used for both civilian and military purposes, only directly supports the military action of the enemy. In its commentary, the RCRC gives the example of bombarding a food producing area to prevent the enemy from advancing through it, or attacking a food storage barn which is being used by the enemy for cover or as an armed depot. This can be contrasted with the general definition of military objective, which only requires an effective contribution to the military action without specifying that the contribution must be direct. In addition, even if an object indispensable to the survival of the civilian population makes a direct contribution to the military action of the enemy, no attack is allowed if it is expected that it will cause the starvation of the population. No matter how great a military advantage was expected to arise from an attack in these circumstances, it would remain unlawful. This contrasts with the normal application of the principle of proportionality, according to which even serious damage to the civilian population may be justified provided that the military advantage is very significant. We must also note that objects that are indispensable to the survival of the civilian population are protected not only from being attacked, but also from being destroyed, removed or rendered useless for the purpose of starving the civilian population. This, for example, includes poisoning water supplies, or the destruction of crops by defoliants. One important activity that is excluded from the general protection against the destruction of objects essential to the survival of the population is the so-called scorched earth tactics. This is the practice of preventing the advancing enemy from making any use of the land they capture, for instance, through burning crops and forests. However, states can only employ scorched earth tactics on their own territory and on the parts that they control. 